Hello guys and welcome back to another Amp Creator tutorial. Today we're going to be covering the custom crafting thing and updating that particular tutorial for 2021.3 I believe we're on. So yeah, we're going to be covering that and if we open up the uh, block inventory right now, um, you can see that we have just a standard 3x3 and one output slot. So if we were to place the uh, the bone meal like this we have a couple recipes set up so we can create some bones if we remove one the item goes away if we add it back it comes back and there's a couple different options for that so we can do this direction as well um, the difference between uh, this and the other one is one is using tags and the other one is using uh, just strictly items so you can use either tags or items with this particular example and uh, one, a couple of actually other questions that I've had recently, which is how do you add just enough item support or not enough item support for the recipes and stuff. And the thing with that is with Amp Creator, it's not currently possible to add support for those kind of recipes to show up in the menu there. So uh, you're going to have to hold out on that. And another question that I've constantly get is how to make these uh, support all vanilla recipes and the sad part about that is there is no possible way at the current moment to do to do that either so any GUI that you create either it's uh, custom furnaces custom um, mechanics or anything like that you're not going to be able to use just enough items for recipes or anything like that so make sure to provide that on your mod page or something so people can actually see how things are crafted or people are going to have a hard time using your mod all right so with that being said uh, if we were to just craft up a few items so we can uh, hold shift and click and we'll add one item to our inventory or we can just regular click and we'll add the same item. So same idea with the tags. If we were to go here and just shift click, then it'll do that. We'll do shift click with um, a couple of them. So, and as you can see, the item goes away. So that's basically that. Um, it's bound to the actual block. So it's a little bit different than previous versions. Uh, it's also using, um, GUI uh, mechanics for the procedure blocks rather than uh, testing for the item in the blocks inventory which is a little bit different but it seemed to be the only way that I could actually get the uh, mechanics to actually work properly. So let's go into M Creator and I'll show you uh, the, the basic rundown of how everything's set up. Alright so there is a couple different files in this particular folder. We need the block and then we are also going to need some other procedures for script. Uh, there is also one for the a GUI for the actual GUI. So let's start with the GUI. Uh, as you can see here, we have our basic uh, format. We started with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then we have our ninth slot over here. Our ninth one is our output slot. The 0 to 8 is our basically our crafting grid. And as you can see over here, we have all these different slots over here. So if we open up the slots, as you can see, uh, we have a procedure here set when slot con contents change. Now these are set for all of the different uh, crafting grid ones right here up to this one right here. The ninth one doesn't actually have that particular one running. It has a different one running for when items taken from the slot. Now that's going to be important. I'll cover that in just a second. Now basically this procedure here is the same one as if we open expand the um, GUI procedures. There's one called the tick update. Now this one basically just loads our procedures in by calling the procedures for our recipes and before all that what we're doing is we're going to remove slot 9. Now what this will do is it will basically make sure when the crafting grid, the item is taken out of the crafting grid for the items that the output slot also is removed at the same time. So if you, it's this particular block right here isn't added in before the recipes, then it's going to basically um, allow you to put the items into the crafting grid, take an item out, and then basically 
obtain the item from the output slot without actually crafting it. So make sure you put this above uh, at the beginning of your procedure for the update tick. Uh, the reason for that is if it's behind, it's going to make sure that it's always removed. If it's at the beginning, then it's going to basically run it before the procedures are added. Now, the thing with procedures, I know I haven't covered this too much, is it basically runs it from the top of the procedure to the last thing in the procedure. So uh, in this case, this is really important why the block has to be at the beginning. All right, so this is the update one. This is also the procedure used for slot 0 to 8 with the when slot contents change. So you basically just need to select that same procedure up here. All right, so now we have our slot nine, which is our when item taken from the, uh, when item taken from slot. Uh, this one, I don't think I actually have a way to get in there from here. So when item taken from slot, this is basically just going to remove all items from the, from slot zero to eight. So that's basically what it's doing. It's just removing one item from all of those slots. And then we also have one when the GUI is closed. Now this one is a little bit longer. Uh, what this is doing is it is going to do a couple things. So the first thing, like each, these are all module, right? So it's going to do this for each one of the slots. So we'll cover this one right here for slot zero and then I'll cover the, the I believe there's slot nine down here as well that we have to cover. But all the ones between slot zero and slot eight are the same. All right, so slot zero is basically going to test if the value of slot, uh, the contents in slot zero is greater than one. So if it has an item greater than one, what it needs to do is it's going to basically add the item uh, get the amount of the item. So we're going to get the item from the slot um, in the block. So this is, it's technically on the block side, but it's also on the player side. It's a little hard to come explain how that works. But in this case, what we're doing is we're getting the amount of this, the amount in the block. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of that item and then we're going to make sure that it's the uh, item from the slot uh, zero from the block itself. And then we're going to add it to the player's inventory. So if we go to player procedures, there is one right here where it says add and then the value. And then it says add to inventory. So this is the block that I've basically added. I've removed these two pieces right here. And then what I've done is I've gone to item procedures, get number of items, place that down here, got rid of the provided item stack, and then I've gone to block data, and then I've scrolled down and I've gotten the block item. So basically what this will do is it will get the number from the amount of items in slot zero. And then what I needed to do was basically add the, uh, make a copy of item. This is under item procedures again and we're just going to remove the provided item stack because it doesn't actually support this particular procedure. And then we're going to place that in like that same way that we did the block procedure thing here. So basically that will add it to the player's inventory when it's closed. And then we just want to make sure that it's basically removed from the blocks inventory. So what we're going to do is we're just going to remove and then we're going to get the amount, same thing that we did right here. And then we're going to basically just say, remove it from that particular slot. Now the slot ID has to be from zero to eight for these ones. So that's basically that. So make sure all the slot zero slot numbers uh, here, 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 like all these ones that are basically listed as zero are basically your slot ID for that particular slot. Now that's consistent all the way up to slot nine, which is a little bit different. What we're doing here is we're going to just remove the item. We're not going to add it to the player's inventory. And um, yeah, that's all that this basically does when the GUI is closed. Okay, so another thing that you want to basically make sure for slot zero to eight is make sure that 
uh, drop items when GUI is not bound to an external um, inventory is closed. So basically what this will do is it'll drop the items if it's not bound to an inventory. We're going to bind it to a block so that's not an issue. Uh, slot 9, uh, we actually have this disabled, so make sure this one is disabled for slot 9. So both of these checkboxes should be disabled. Alright, so I just want to make sure that I covered that as well. The block itself, uh, we have just our textures, basic settings. Uh, all these pages can basically be customized. Uh, still, this can be customized how you like. Uh, this uh, still can be customized. And when you get to this page here for block entity, you want to enable this and then you want to select your GUI that you're going to bind to it. Now basically what binding does is it allows it to um, basically use the inventory and link to the GUI and then it's going to run it from the block instead. You also want to check the uh, open bound GUI on right click so make sure this one is checked. Uh, for the slots, uh, we have nine, or pardon me, ten slots. We have nine here, and then we have a tenth one here. So we want to make sure that we have ten slots in total right here, and the capacity that we want for it is 64. Uh, the other thing that we want to do is drop items from inventory when block is destroyed. So if there is a item in the um, crafting slots or in the uh, output slot we want to make sure that it drops the item. Uh, the other thing is that we're basically doing is we're just going to disable comparator output and we're not going to have any disabled um, uh, hopper systems because that also blocks player interaction for some reason. Alright so the other thing is all these can be customized. I don't think there's any other procedures here for the block so you can just save that after you finish customizing it and then we have our recipe tags so basically recipe tags are on your mod side we can open this tag up and we can see that it's um, using the mod namespace if you're not if you don't know what your mod namespace is you can go to your workspace workspace settings and then your mod id slash namespace is going to be this one right here now you want to set that as your mod namespace not under forge because it's going to basically be a lot if you keep adding to forge and stuff and it's not really necessary for the recipes itself so we can just use the namespace for your own mod and then it will run the put the recipe tags and stuff under your mod itself uh, this is, needs to be an item tag so make sure that it's an item tag and just assign the name of the tag how you basically want it. In our case I'm using bone meal for the item so I want to make sure that bone meal is the item selected and then I'm going to assign bone meal for the item uh, for the tag group as well. Alright so that's the tags that's how tags are formatted and uh, then we have two recipes built in. Uh, those are the recipes that I showed before. They're very straightforward stuff um, not too complicated uh, what you can see uh, here, okay, actually, hold on just a second. I don't think we need that script here. Pretty sure we don't need it. I was trying to get the um, system for shift clicking to work and it wasn't working. So this is actually what you basically need. So how this works is from your slot 0 to slot 8, what we're going to do is we're going to be testing for uh, in this case, the tags for bone meal. So what we're doing is we need to first get the amount of items and test if it's equal to or greater than the amount of items that you need to require to craft that particular item. So say you wanted to craft, uh, take um, 16 of the bone meal from slot zero, then you would set this number to 16 and then say you would want it from all three slots so to create like one bone it would be uh, 16 bone meal per slot so you would set that number to the um, to your actual output slot the other thing that we're doing is we're testing for the item so basically we're just using tags for that uh, very straightforward now there is one value uh, that you will need you'll need an and statement 
for all these because you want to test to make sure that the condition for the actual recipe is all true. So the other thing that you're doing is you're going to test for the items to be empty in the other slots. So slot one is obviously empty because we don't need it. If we open up our GUI, you can see slot one is here. We didn't actually use that particular um, particular one for the recipe. Uh, we did use slot zero, slot four, and slot eight. So basically slot one hasn't been used, neither has slot five or slot seven or slot three, and I believe there's a few other ones. So um, yeah, so all these ones that basically don't have the tag listed is basically the ones that are going to be empty. So you wanna make sure that the value is equal to zero for these ones, and then you wanna set your number for your actual item for the um, bone meal and stuff like that. So that's basically how those are set up. Now, if you want to configure a certain recipe, now if it's basically just all zeros like this, this is basically just going to make sure that um, this is the basic setup for your actual uh, crafting table recipe. It's gonna go from slot zero to slot eight. Now, the difference is when you want to actually add an item to it, uh, you want to make sure that, well, one, all these things are set to zero. So when you want to add an item to it, you want to basically go ahead and add an and statement to that particular one. And you're going to drop that right here. And then you're going to go ahead and grab a tag and you're going to place that down here. Now the difference between these ones and the other blocks that we used in the other procedures is these ones are GUI based. So if we were to open up the GUI procedure, slot and GUI procedures, we've used the number ones from here and we've used the um, item selectors from here as well. So also you've noticed that the GUI is adding that particular item in slot nine. So basically after we've um, added all these particular procedures to the proper slots, what we can do is we can basically go ahead and say, okay, if all these conditions are true, so if these slots here, 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 and these ones here are all empty, and these ones here are actually with one item or whatever value that you want, then we want to basically set the, uh, the slot nine, our output slot, Again, our slot nine one is here uh, to our actual item that we're basically going to craft. So that's basically what that does. And um, it's not too much different from the other recipe as well. So the other recipe just uses um, items. Now, again, we don't need all this uh, stuff right here. That was just for me testing. So same thing. Uh, we're just using different slots for this one uh, rather than going this way with tags from slot zero, four, and eight, what we're doing is we're going from two, four, and six, whoops, two, four, and six. So those are the, the ways that we're going with the other items. So same, same idea, the only difference is we're going to use a item operator. So if we go to logic, we can use this item operator here. And then we're going to use the GUI selector for testing for the slot. And then we're going to just go to Minecraft components and get a slot selector. So we can basically set whatever we want for the item that we want to test for. In our case, I've just basically used bone meal. It's the uh, same exact concept though. So it's going to do the exact same thing. We're just making sure that all the other slots that aren't being used are basically empty. And the ones that we are, we're going to be specifying if the number is equal to or greater than rather than just equal to zero. So basically what equal or greater than does is it's going to test for basically one and above where um, if we were to use greater than, it's going to basically just test for any number above. In, our, this, in this case, it would be two. Um, and if it's equal to, then what it's going to do is it's going to only test for one item. So it will ignore anything below that value or above it. 
So you want to make sure that your item is actually set to equal to or greater than, which is this symbol right here with the greater than symbol with the underscore underneath. Now there is also less than, but we don't want to actually use that for this particular procedure. We just want equal to or greater than. And we want to make sure that the value is exactly zero when we're not using the slots. So we use the equal sign for that one. So that's basically it. Um, I don't think there's anything else that, that I need to cover. I'm just going to save that so I don't forget. And um, yeah, I'll make sure to provide the a workspace for this particular project. It'll have the actual workspace that has all the procedures and stuff just in case that something gets bugged and I need to update it or someone wants to update it themselves and um, procedures, I'll add the procedures as well to the, um, the actual project file as well. So when you download that, you'll have the workspace and uh, procedures. So I'll upload that to GitHub as soon as possible. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.